Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Ducati Hypermotard project. Yes, it's finally happening. After a two month hiatus of videos, we, we built the engine at Nelly's. It's come home, it's sat in the garage for two months doing nothing. Well, that's all about to change. We're gonna finish this bike. I've been putting off working on this. I think, oh, I've got all that work to do. I've just been delaying starting. I know once I start this bike, I'll get it finished. So this has been a labor of love. It's taken me, well, this bike's probably been apart two and a half years. It's one of those projects which has got completely out of hand. It started as a little bit of an engine tart up with a rattle can, and it turned into stripping the engine down to every single component, getting cranks balanced, ported heads. This should be pretty darn cool when it's completed. So uh, if you're interested in finally seeing the Ducati go back together, back on the road, then uh, this is it. It's happening, people. Chopsy, roll the intro. So the biggest issue with this project, um, I think I could probably put this bike back together in a couple of, well, say 10 hours. The biggest problem is because it's been two and a half years ago since I started stripping it down, uh, I've got to remember how it goes back together. I've got to remember where all the parts are. I could be missing bits still. I mean, let me just show you the amount of bits I've got spread around the garage here. Have a look at this. So we've got the engine here. We've also, this is the bits I've sort of had painted, treated, worked on, Cerakoted triples or, or yokes if you're in the UK, painted subframe, powder coat swinging arm. I, I must say a massive thank you to uh, the guys at Cerakote UK because they, they finished painting my rear set. If you remember, these were a horrible silver, like chrome. Um, they've been Cerakoted, so massive thanks to uh, Cerakote UK finishing those. My mate Adam, who did the was going to do the Cerakotings, changed jobs and he, they no longer do Cerakote at his place. So massive thanks to Cerakote UK for, for painting those for me. But I mean, you know, here we go, just bits, 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 bits everywhere. Oh, that there, mate. So here we have the frame, covers off it, not seen the light and day in two and a half years. So I've got all the wiring loom attached, it's still pretty dirty. So I'm, I'm gonna go through this now, just clean it up. I've got some sort of contact cleaner stuff as well, because we know old Ducatis and wiring can be a little bit temperamental. So I think I'll clean up all the connectors while I'm here and just give it a whole, I'll just give it a whole clean up really. Got the ECU and everything still attached. You know, so, so the, I, when I said I stripped it down to bare components, I actually left a lot of stuff on the frame, didn't I? So that might have been a sensible thing to do. That's going to make it easier because I won't have to remember where, how to route wires and everything. So uh, this will be a piece of cake. This isn't going to take long at all. You little beautiful Ducati. I was meaning to do this job for uh, two and a half years. So there we are, cleaning of frame completed. It's actually come up quite well. All the wiring's come up really quite well as well. So uh, we're happy with that, we're happy with that. We sprayed a little bit of contact cleaner into all the connections. So hopefully, I mean, I spotted a few little bits that there's a tiny little chip here. There's a couple of tiny little marks there, but I, I don't think it's worth, you know, removing all of that loom off the frame, going through all the expense of getting it all powder coated just for the sake of a couple of little marks, which you're probably never gonna see anyway. So that's actually come out, I think, really well. One thing I wanna do now is actually fit new headstock bearings. New bearings are here for the, uh, the headstock. I've removed all the bearing races. We've just got the bit of race left in the frame. So I need to get that out and then uh, put the new, uh, new bearings in. I think it'd be easy to do that now while the frame is off of the engine. So I've got the top bearing race out. Yes, we're doing this properly. I've got a puller and everything. So um, now just the bottom one. So I'm just gonna put this through, give it a, give it a whack. Here it comes. Simple as that. So there we go. That's the race out of the uh, bottom part of the frame. Just gotta put the new ones in now. In with the chips. <laughs> We've got some bearings. Now I'm only going to fit the outer races for now, obviously, which is this piece. Now it's been in the freezer. How's it going to fit? Quick little bit of grease around the old. Quick, it's warming up, it's warming up. A little bit of grease around there just to help it go in. A 
I knew there was a reason to keep the old ones. Drive in the new ones. She's home. There we go. Use this twice in one day. Now the other side. Bingo. Beautiful. And there we go. We've got the outer race in place, both ends, ready to mount the uh, the yokes. Woohoo! So that's, I think, the frame prepped, ready to go on the engine. So I think I'm going to lift it, get it in place. I'm just, I think all these elements of the, the engine stand is clear of the frame, but I'm going to just get it in. It makes it a little bit more tricky because I've got all the wiring on it and everything. So I'm sort of wishing I took the wiring off, but I'm going to hold it in place, see if I can get the frame bolts through and actually bolt the frame to the engine. This is a pivotal moment. Oh, this is surprisingly heavy being, uh, Steel. Oh, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Let's put a little bit of something in to protect it. Oh, God. We've got one in. We've got one in. Should better get the other one in. Woo. <laughs> Woo. The frame is on the engine. Have a look at this. Have a look at that. We have the start of a motorcycle. We have the frame back on the engine for the first time in three, I'm gonna say three years, two and a half years. She's back together. Oh, and doesn't she look beautiful? Mated together once more. So uh, yeah, that, that was a bit tricky on your own, but I managed it. Look at that. It's actually looking pretty darn good now, isn't it? It almost looks like a, it almost looks like it's uh, ready to go. How much more is there to do? Bolt the swinging arm on, fuel tank on, forks in, wheels on. Ready for a test ride. Morning. It's Sunday morning. Welcome back to day two. I've sort of uh, been thinking how to progress <laughs> the build of this engine. I've even been back and started watching all of my previous build series is just to see how things go back together. And I've taken a lot of screen grabs of the videos. So I think in this episode, carrying on in this episode, I think I'm gonna get all the wiring sort of connected up, start putting maybe the throttle bodies back on. I wanna put the swinging arm in, but it's just gonna hang a little bit. And until I'm ready to go, I think I'm gonna do the wiring first and put things back on, you know, before things get too busy. Um, so I think go round, connect all the connectors up to the engine I can find. Just make sure we got everything really. Um, as, as I've got a, something missing here, and I'm not sure what that is. At the end, one of the sensors is not in the engine. I don't know what that is. I might have to try and locate that. But yeah, just go round, start th putting things back on really and see, see how far we get. I've got the, hodge, the head stock to do. Oh, you see it's a bit nippy in here. It's a bit cold in here today. I've got the headstock to do, but again, I think I'm just gonna do the wiring first and then once all the wiring's done, maybe even put, I've got an induction kit as I mentioned, so I put the induction, fit the induction kit, you know, fit the throttle bodies, get it all sort of ready. Um, I think this is in the wrong place. This should be up here. This, this is in, in incorrect. There's an oil cooler to go on, the oil cooler line. Just get all the engine buttoned up really. That's what I'm thinking of doing today. Get it sealed. So here's the problem. <laughs> I've started to try and connect the wires and I realise I'm missing things. Like there's a connector which goes into the engine here. There's also another one which I think is the uh, oil pressure feed. I, had to, I have found that one now. I have found that one. But I've been going through all my bits of bobs, you know, emptying all my boxes out. I've got a lot of stuff labelled in bags, but I seem to be missing like that one of the coils. Look, I mean, how horrible is that? These are really quite expensive to buy these coils as well. So, horn, uh, I'm gonna need a new horn. So I'm sort of going through it all, but there's a lot of stuff which needs attention still. And I don't know what that is. I've got the manual up, which is great. It's got some really, really good sort of wiring diagram stuff, which shows where, where things are run, how, the, how things are run, you know. Really, really, really good that is. That's gonna be really helpful. So I guess this is the problem I knew I was always gonna have remembering how this all goes back together and, and, and finding the things to to put it back together. I mean rectifier, you know that, that goes under there, that, that that's easy enough. All the oh it's just it's just 
this is the problem. <laughs> I, I said this would probably take me 10 hours to complete. I think it'll take me 10 hours just to work out where everything goes. That's the other sensor I found. But I mean, that's minging that, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. That's not going back on in that condition. That, that's the oil pressure one. But there should be another one that looks similar to that, but I can't find it. Ah, it could, is it that? Ah, is it that one? No, it's not threaded. That's something to do with the uh, speedo sensor, I think. It's a good job this bike is very basic and doesn't have ABS, doesn't have you know electronics. It's very, very simple. So at least that's in my favor. The old uh, wire wheel in the drill trick. See what I can do. Better, but a little bit marked up. Bit of wet and dry or something on it now, I think. Maybe a lick of paint, actually. Getting carried away. It's going to take a long time at this rate. It's a start. Maybe just a little bit of fresh lick of paint over that. After a clean up and a paint job, done that so bad. Beautiful. Next job is to mount the oil cooler. It's a little bit beaten up, this oil cooler. Bit of damage on the fins there. Actually, it, oh, it needs at least a coat of paint, doesn't it? Can I not just put anything on without having to, it's quite horrible actually. It's like it's had a terrible paint job in the past with the cover on. Doesn't look so bad, does it? So I've taken it indoors, washed it out, degreased it, found the old oil line to, to seal it. So it's all been washed, dried, I'm going to give it a lick of paint and then see how it comes out and then decide basically what to do. I mean, some of the fins have got a bit of damage. I've tried to just straighten out the fins a little bit. Obviously, it's going to be running more power now. I'm a little bit worried that maybe the radiator should be upgraded anyway because, of course, this bike is oil-cooled. This is the only, it's, no, it's not water-cooled. This is the only cooling the bike gets, but it's 400 quid for an upgraded, uh, upgraded oil cooler. Pricey. So I've uh, resprayed the oil cooler. It's actually come out quite nice, actually. Come out all right. So I'm quite happy with that. I've just gone to fit it and realised I'm missing some little vibration dampeners, which, which go onto here. Um, so that's something I need to add to my shopping list, six pound each. So I'm building up a list of more parts I need. So I can't fit the oil cooler until we get the vibration dampeners. But I have swapped around these mounting covers to the right way round. I think I found one of the wires to plug into this sensor, which goes on the top there. No clue what it does. Um, but yeah, parts needed before I can fit the oil cooler. Bit annoying. So I've basically just started connecting wires. I've connected on the main sort of earth onto the engine here. There's two big earth cables here. I've connected up the side stand uh, switch, which also you've got these little metal guides. So I've, these have all been blasted in the past. So I've put those back on. Also fitted the oil lines. The oil cooler lines are here. Haven't timed them up yet because they've got to run through and there's not much, you know, because they're big um, Goodridge type lines. There's not much movement. So I need the, the oil cooler on there, which means I need the spacer brackets until I can finish that. I've run them up through the bike. So they're sort of in position. It's going to be tricky. They're going to be really tricky to actually connect to the oil cooler, but we'll see how we get on. But I wanted to get this side sort of done, you know, get everything connected here because you've got these, like I say, you've got also the generator one comes up and connects here. So I've started connecting things, but because I can't do any more with the oil cooler and it's going to, I need a bit of flexibility in these pipes when I mount it, I'm not going to do any more around here. It's actually taking much longer than I thought. I've just, I've spent about four hours out here today and all I've managed to achieve is to connect a few wires because I've just been searching for things, obviously painting things, which I wasn't happy with the finish on cleaning stuff up, so this is going to take a long time. I mean, I've done hardly anything and it's taken me four hours. <laughs> so I guess this is the technical bit. This is the bit that's going to take the time. I mean, I've painted like a, I'll, let me show you this. Remember the mucky coil pack or coil, as I should I say on this? Well, that's been painted. That looks much better. That was all rusty and horrible. So things like that have taken time to get done. Obviously I've, I've sprayed the, uh, the oil cooler as well. I'm not, it's a bit of a matte finish, the paint I've got. I wanted more of a shiny, black i'm not really happy with the matte finish so i might get myself some more paint and do a coat with some high temperature gloss black so while i'm waiting for the dampers but i think i think most other things are already clean and ready to put on so 
Uh, yeah, I think swinging arm, and then I can probably put the headstock on as well, can't I? So, but that means fitting bearings. So I've put the bearings in the freezer. Um, I've also put the headstock, you know, the yokes uh, in the freezer as well to actually shrink the tube and heat. I'm going to heat the bearings a little bit and slide the bearings on. So I think that's the next job. Or the swinging arm. Ooh, one of the two. Gloss paint. That looks better, doesn't it? Nice coat of gloss paint. Oil cooler is fitted. Fitted the uh, RNG red guard, so we don't have to worry about any stones puncturing that in the future. And I've even got me, uh, me oil cooler lines all attached as well. Same with the other side. Ooh, sexy. So there we go. I think we are done for this episode. I mean, I'm quite pleased with how things have gone. I've made a good start. I mean, you know, from here down, it's sort of all done and connected, apart from the rear sets and the uh, side stand switch. But in the next one, we'll get the throttle bodies on. I've got an induction kit, which I told you about. I've got to get some brackets made, some aluminium brackets made, because I'm not going to be using the air box. You have to relocate the coils onto brackets. So I've contacted some local sheet metal manufacturing places, but no one seems very keen to tackle such a small project. So. I might end up trying to knock something up myself. But that's to come. I've also looked into getting the exhaust polished as well by a local company, just polished up so it doesn't look quite so dirty. I may get a full custom exhaust for this. I'm not 100% decided yet. I'm speaking to my friends at Pro Race to see if maybe we can do like a twin under seat exhaust. I'm also gonna be going up to see the guys at Hell Performance who do their who do the brake lines and the calipers. So we're gonna be fitting a set of the Hell calipers on this bike as well. They're V2 monoblock calipers, so that's gonna be fantastic. So I'm going up to see their manufacturing facility. I think they're in Exeter way, and have a look round, see what they're doing up there, and come away with some a full caliper set for this bike, plus brake and clutch master cylinders, because Hell make the whole, the whole lot. So that'll be really interesting. British manufacturing going on to my Italian motorcycle. Ooh. What a combination. So if you want to see more of this project, don't forget to subscribe below and I will see you very soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys.